in his preface to the epistle to the Romans. Martin Luther wrote that faith is a living, bold trust in God's grace, so certain of God's favor that it would risk death a thousand times trusting in it. Such confidence and knowledge of God's grace makes you happy, joyful, and bold in your relationship to God and all creatures. The Holy Spirit makes this happen through faith. Because of it, you freely, willingly, and joyfully do good to everyone, serve everyone, suffer all kinds of things, love and praise the God who has shown you such grace. Faith is living. It's active. It breathes in us. It moves us to experience the joy that God provides to us, moving us to trust, to live, to act according to God's will for us. Yet human inclination doesn't prompt us to automatically give ourselves, to give our hearts, our minds to God. The sin of the world causes us to struggle, to doubt, to not boldly trust the one who gives us life. Faith walks us through those dark moments, those difficult days, when we aren't sure we are strong enough to face what the world brings. Even if it's small, the Holy Spirit uses our faith to beckon us to listen and to respond to God's love. For the Syrophoenician woman, her faith led her to Jesus. Talk of Jesus' miracles made its way to the land of the Gentiles, a place Jesus hadn't visited up to this point. The woman heard that Jesus was around, and she had faith enough in him that he would heal her daughter, that she sought him out. Not only did she seek him out and ask for help, but she didn't back down when he ignored her, when he called her a dog, the lowest of the low. The woman's faith made her bold enough to even argue with Jesus. She didn't abandon her mission. She was focused on a way to get her daughter healed. She could have easily accepted Jesus' response and walked away, disappointed that he didn't help her. She could have ignored the gossip altogether, not trusting in Jesus, and not even sought him out. But instead, she allowed her faith to guide her actions. What would it take for us to have faith like the Syrophoenician woman? Is our faith active, living, breathing inside of us enough that we boldly go after what God call, is calling us toward? Trusting in God enough to live boldly is difficult. Committing ourselves to do the work it takes to have an active living faith is also difficult. If we don't nurture our faith, it becomes stagnant, eventually dying out like candles do from lack of oxygen. Committing ourselves to Jesus and developing our faith takes work, work that we can't always do on our own. That is why God calls us into community with each other, so we can help each other have a vibrant, active faith. In my middle and high school years, my own church community and youth group taught me a lot about living out a vibrant faith. Our volunteer leaders and parents poured themselves into us, shared their faith with us, and taught us what community was supposed to be like. They tried their best to keep their faith active so that we could learn from them, so that we could learn to have vibrant faith lives, so that we could be a part of the mission God is calling us towards, not just standing on the sidelines. No matter whether it was getting stuck on the side of the road because we ran out of gas and no one checked the reserve tank, or whether it was practical jokes, like saran wrapping the toilets in the youth house, or even when one of us had to go to the hospital from a skiing trip. We were there for each other, praying for each other, 
laughing, living together. Of course, we did have our moments where we argued, where we didn't act like community, where we were teenagers, and where we had to be called out on our behavior. I can remember more than one Marcella Murphy stare that caused the entire room to go silent, as I'm sure many of you have those memories from the people in your life that point you towards Christ. We learned the importance of daily prayer, daily time with God and our Bibles, and weekly worship together. But we also learned the importance of living out our faith, the doing and the being part of discipleship. We learned to lean into God's grace and experience incredible joy, even during the pain of losing loved ones, even in our own youth group, when we were angry, when we were frustrated. God doesn't call us to sit by and only say that we are committed to Christ. God calls us to get up, to take that step, to live boldly, and to live out our faith together. God calls us to be in relationship with each other and with God. When we nurture those relationships, our lives become filled with active, vibrant faith that we can't help but live out through good works and service to others. Here at St. Paul's, we have lots of ways that we live out our service to others. We support each other and our community through our actions, our time, and even our finances. The boxes of school supplies in my office prove that along with every Mother Hubbard's Cupboard Sunday, our Monday night dinners, our quilting ministry, our disaster relief responses, our Lutheran services of the Carolinas responses, family promise, and even through our fundraisers with youth ministries. Of course, those aren't the only ways that we live out our faith. When we leave this place here after worship on Sunday mornings, we go back into the world and we spend time caring for our loved ones, helping our neighbors, being engaged in the different organizations across our community. And we try to live our faith the best we can as disciples of Christ. So it should be easy to live out our faith and have good works come forth, right? It should be easy to be bold, to move like the Syrophoenician women, not giving up, finding Jesus. Yet, we let the busy busyness, the weariness, and the complacency of life consume us rather than God's love and God's grace. It's easy to let our joy disappear, to let the good works be another check mark on our calendar rather than to have an active, vibrant faith. In those moments, it's time to stop for a while and rely on the one who gives us life. Rely on the one who brings us joy. Shut off the noise, retreat to a quiet place, even if it's only the bathroom for five minutes, and pray that God will bring you peace. Open the Bible and read how God's promises do not fail you. Talk to your loved ones or friends about God's goodness and joy you are finding in your life. When we trust in Jesus enough to seek him out, like the Syrophoenician woman, we can experience true joy, much like she and her daughter must have felt after receiving healing, much like the deaf man felt after he could hear. Nurture our faith by daily prayer, daily time with God, daily time in our community, allows us to experience vibrant, active, joyful faith from which good works spring. In the name of Christ, and not in any selfish deceit. How are you engaging your faith to be bold, to be living, to be active in your own life? How are you engaging your faith to be a part of this community here at St. Paul's, to be a part of the greater community at large. 
God is calling us towards something joyful, something great. Let us trust in Christ as we continue our journey of faithful believers together. Let us place our hope in God as we navigate the challenges of this world. Let us experience the true joy that comes from serving and following Jesus. Amen.